What's going on everyone? So today I've got another video and this video is about this here iPhone battery tester. Um, it just tests, it. Uh, it's a little module that reads the data from the uh, built-in gas gauge in the batteries. The gas gauge is made by Texas Instruments. Um, you can't just sort of read them out. They all have like lockout keys and stuff on them. So this won't work for all batteries that use that chip. Um, there are versions of this that support Samsung batteries as well, but this is just the iPhone and iPad kit. It also supports the Apple Watch as well, but I don't think I've ever, ever actually opened an Apple Watch. Not that I can think of, anyway. So, here is the device itself. We'll take a look at this bit in a second. Here is some of the daughter boards. It uses USB connectors, which is a bit weird, but eh, I guess if you've got them, use them. So this is for all the iPhones up to the 7 Plus. It should have an update coming out for the 8. I'm not sure. Might have to look into that. Um, this is for the Apple Watch. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Uh, again, needs to update for Series 3. And here's the iPads. So it just does the Mini 2, 3, 1, 4. Air 1, 2, and iPad 3 and 4. The Air 1 and 2, it should just be able to test the Pro as well. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure the iPad 9.7, the new one, uses the same battery as the iPad Air 1 because it uses the same screen and stuff. And it also comes with one of these cheap USB charger boards to charge these batteries because they got built-in protection and everything. Um, you can just feed them 5 volts, they're fine. You can connect them straight to the USB and charge them. When they're fully charged, they just cut off the uh, input to the cell. Uh, these also have the little activate button. And all that really does is just pulses, I think, just 5 volts. Yeah, I think it just pulses 5 volts to the um, gas gauge chip, I think. Or, a I don't know, it does something funny and it... it, it um, boost the cell voltage up enough for the um, the uh, switching circuit in the protection of the cell to let them charge again. Um, helps a bit. It's also good for externally, as I said, it's also good for externally charging batteries and it also has this little LED on there. I don't know if it changes color or not. This unit also actually has built-in charge and it gives you a read out of the current drawer and stuff. Alrighty, so here's the unit itself. And as you can see, it uses a glossy screen. I put a screen protector on this one. This isn't mine, I'm just borrowing it. Um, inside, I believe it's just an FPGA based device. So I had a quick look in here a couple months ago and it didn't, didn't have anything in there that looked like you could copy it easily. Although I'm not an expert in this stuff, just a hobby. has a built-in battery, so you don't have to have it plugged in, but if you want to charge the batteries using this device, um, you have to have it plugged in, so, which makes sense. And as I think, pop it open. Now, it's the battery soldered, I'm not going to um, desolder it, just in case there's some sort of, like, kill switch in there, I doubt there is. Uh, but as you can see, it's got just a quad flat pack with all the numbers scratched off it, it's got a little piezo beeper. It's also got what looks like uh, ISCP, uh, ICSP, sorry, in circuit serial programmer, whatever you call it. We'll switch on top, USB for charging and what it looks like, uh, firmware updates. Uh, a little chip in there probably for the protection for this cell. No, the cell has its own protection. And yeah, pretty much it really. Um, on the other side of the board is just the screen. There's nothing else on the other side of the board. Um, these on AliExpress at the moment, for some weird reason, are about $400. I think it's just because no one else is selling them. Now, I'm assuming there's firmware updates for this, but I have not seen... It doesn't come with any information about updating the software, so I don't know what you're going to do when new batteries come out. Because as I said before, the, the TI gas gauge chips actually have... Um, they have the ability to protect the data in them, so you can't even read them out, I believe. Um, this can also rewrite the cycle count. 
Um, so the cycle count, I believe, is just in the the user area of the chip, and it just writes over it with all Fs or zeros or whatever. Um, sometimes it doesn't write. It doesn't like writing aftermarket uh, boards. So I'll show you some in a minute. So first up, we've got this battery. This is an iPhone 5 battery, and it's I marked it already with how many milliamp hours it is. It's 410. It's very old, and it's. O for original, so I'm just going to plug this in here. When you turn it on, you can't get to the software inside until you've actually plugged the battery in, but it also has language selection somewhere and the time it was updated. So this was updated this year, so it's fairly recent. Okay, so it just says, probably can't read that but it just says connect battery and battery 30%. That's the internal battery voltage. Just need to charge this thing. To connect batteries, you just plug them in upside down. There's a little LED on here to tell you, oops. Little LED on here to tell you that there's power from the battery. As you can see, zoom in a bit. This one says iPhone 5 original. Um, so it keeps a log of the battery in there, the little battery box on the side there, that's how, many, how much, uh, what voltage the battery is in at the moment, so it's only got 1% of charge in it. Uh, it's got 28% life, so it does a calculation using the built-in gas gauge chip. That's one of the benefits of it, is it uh, calculates battery uh, life and everything inside the actual battery itself, and this reads it out. So the design capacity of this battery is 14, 30 milliamp hours. It's got a full capacity of 411, which means that's how much one full charge holds in this now that it's so worn out. The cycle count is three. That's because it's been rewritten. So if I rewrite this, it'll write the zero. Sometimes it doesn't write properly. And it tells you the chip type battery temperature is just pulling the battery temp from the gas gauge chip as well. Uh, for iPhone 4 batteries, they use an external pin on the connector. I think the 5 does as well. An external pin which just goes to a, I think it's a K-type thermocouple. Pretty standard stuff. Battery, battery serial number and MR, MFRS is the manufacturer, so this one's made by ATL, and the date. So some batteries um, use aftermarket chips, and I'll show you one in a sec which usually don't have any of that information. And then the bu button on the left is to charge, but it won't charge unless it's plugged in. It also gives you the current as well. That's for charging, discharging and stuff. So ATL would be, ah, oh, it doesn't actually say the full name. So, oops. There's multiple, multiple companies that make iPhone batteries. For example, what's this one? That one's ATL as well. That one's ATL. Let's get a different battery. No. All the, most of these are all five, iPhone 5, so they're all ATL. All right, so let's grab, oops, let's grab a different battery. Let's get this six. This one that's not buggered. iPhone six, who makes this one? Hoisin something, whatever they're called. Um, so this iPhone six, 6s, whatever it is, plus um, battery. As you can see, the SE six plus, 6s and uh, S plus, we'll use the same battery connector, which is weird which would be interesting. So this one's non-original, so it can tell by the header of the chip, I believe, uh, who makes battery. So no battery information. The serial number is probably just copied from another battery. This one, again, one cycle count, because this is after market, they do it a lot. Um, the cycle count will get stuck, or they'll it'll be protected, so you can't write to it, and that can give you problems with certain devices, it's mainly just to avoid um, the battery uh, showing up as too old or something, but I think that's only a problem with MacBooks where it, it counts the cycle count, actually does something with it, whereas iPhones, I don't think they really care what the cycle count is. And as you can see, with this cell, there's a problem with it where um, the design capacity says 2750, but it's got 2880, whereas the actual battery itself for this model has 2915, so the chip isn't even the right chip for the phone. So that can also cause problems. 
Okay, so let's just try with this iPhone 5. It has an X on it. 5S, sorry. It has an X on it because it doesn't work. Now, that could be just because the battery is just dead flat and it's locked out, it won't let you read it. Let's get this other iPhone 5. As you can see here, the cycle count says zero, even though it's the original battery, that's because I rewrote it. Uh, this one holds 93% of its life, so it's still actually good and usable. And the manufacturer is also missing, which is interesting. So this, this sort of indicates that this isn't really an original battery, which it isn't. Um, it's a re-manufactured battery. Um, sometimes what they do, uh, the people that make the batteries, is to save some money, they'll actually use chips from older phones because it seems like the newer phones are actually backwards and compatible with the old gas gauge chips, the codes and everything. It must be just part of OS, iOS. Um, because you don't see it much anymore, but the iPhone 4 and 4S, a lot of the 4S batteries actually come up as iPhone 4. So the capacity is wrong. So when you're using the battery, um, sometimes it gives you the wrong battery percentage. It's just kind of all over the place. Here's another one, you know, same deal, 98%. Uh, I forgot to mention before, it also gives you the battery voltage as well. And the current, uh, looks like this is pushing 496 milliamps into the battery, I don't know why. And as you can see, the chip type is different for the 5S, whereas if we grab another 5 again. So the battery is different. Hence why it gives it a different name. Again, just to show you, because I think it was out of frame. Yeah, it's not showing off, it's not original. But the chip is, is different. So, yeah, so this is a pretty cool little tool. It's super useful. Um, as for like, should you get one? I guess if you're dealing with a lot, I guess if you're dealing with a lot of batteries, um, it is worthwhile, uh, but if you don't really deal with that many batteries, it's it's easier. Uh, how am I say this? So like, if you if you're like a small shop and you're fixing a lot of iPhone batteries, it's actually easier to when the customer comes in, instead of pulling the battery out and testing it with this, um, you can use like the the th W3U tool or whatever it's called now, um, which is like a replacement for iTunes to read out the battery using the actual phone. And that's also a benefit of that is you can read out the battery data of the phone that isn't yet supported by this. So like the A plus, I did it yesterday with my new A plus. And yeah, so, and that tool's free as well. It's just software, it just replaces iTunes. It does a lot more stuff than iTunes can do. And yeah, I don't really understand why it's free. I don't know how they're making money off it. Hmm and it's Chinese software, so could be, I don't know. Anyway, but ha, uh, as I was saying, you can just use PC side software now to check the battery capacity. This is only really good if you're dealing with uh, you know, lots of batteries, if you're buying them in or as what I'm doing here is um, sort of repurposing them and instead of using an actual battery charger to cycle the batteries and calculate the capacity that way, it's just quicker just to use the chip in the battery, it's already done it for me. And that also weeds out of a lot of other problems as well. So, yeah, uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful or useful, uh, maybe consider subscribing. Till next time, see ya.